Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. In this video, we're taking a look at question 1.1.3 from the textbook, A First Course in Linear Algebra by Cutler. You can find my notes for this course on my website, tutor.ca, where you can also find information about my private tutoring services. Okay, so let's read the question. You have a system of k equations in two variables, where k is greater than or equal to two. Explain the geometric significance of no solution, a unique solution, an infinite number of solutions. So let's understand what the question is asking for. We have k equations some amount of equations. They are each in two variables though, okay? They are each in two variables. What that means is since they're each in two variables, they essentially are a line. They form a line if you were to graph them, right? So if, for example, uh, one equation in two variables could look like this, 3x plus 5y equals 2, right? This is an equation in two variables. This can be rearranged into y equals mx plus b, right? mx plus b form, mx plus b. Um, but you don't have to. I mean, this is the linear equation. This is this is it. This forms a line just as much as y equals mx plus b forms a line, right? And how many lines do we have? Well, we don't particularly know. All we know is that we have at least two. That's what this is saying. The number of equations, k, is greater than or equal to two. So it could be two or it could be greater than two. So what does that mean to have no solutions, right? Geometrically, that's, that's the idea. Geome geometrically, what does that mean to have no solutions? Well, what that means is that Let's take a look at right now, what if we had two lines? If we had two lines, they can either form a solution, which would be that point right there, these two lines I just drew, right? The system of two lines here has a solution at that point where they intersect. Or they could form no solutions if they were parallel, right? Or they could form infinite solutions if they were the same line. They overlap on top of each other. If they were the same line, there's infinite places where they touch because they are the same line. Every point on either line is an intersection point. Okay, so let's say here no solution would mean they're parallel if you had two, right? If you had two. But we have any number. We don't just have two. So what could that mean? No solution could be that all the lines are parallel, right? So da 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 till you have your kth line. So let's say here, you know, we have this, this wraps up all the rest of the lines. They could all be parallel. Or another way to, that you could deal with this, so this is part, we're talking about part A right now, no solution, right? Another way that you could have no solutions is if two of the lines maybe intersect, they form a solution right there, and then another line does not pass through that point. And then it doesn't matter how many, what the other lines do. It, it makes no difference what the other lines do. So you could have, you know, lines that also pass through this point, right? You could have other lines that also pass through this point. You could have other lines that, you know, pass through this point right here. The point is, is that we don't have a solution to the system anymore because there's no one point where all the lines pass through. Okay, so what's the geometric significance of no solution? Essentially what it is, is that, like I just said, there's no, no one uh, unique point that all the lines pass through. Okay, that's the geometric significance of no solution. Uh, if you're talking about two variables, right? Talking about a line, and you don't know how many lines you have. But that's the idea. We don't want to think about a specific number of lines. We just want to think about in general. Okay, so let's look at B now. A unique solution. What's the geometric significance of that? Well, it's essentially um, the, the opposite of this. Pretty much, it's that there is a unique point that all the lines pass through. So if we had two lines, and there's a unique solution, that means they intersect at a point, right? Now, let's say if we have three lines and we still have a unique solution, a unique solution, that means there's a specific one single point that all the lines, that's a solution to the system. That means that this third line also passed the path through the point because we want to maintain that this point right here is the solution to the system, right? For reference, I should be drawing little arrows on all the lines here, but kind of interchangeably do and don't. And if I had another line, if I had a, a, a one, two, three, four, fourth line, then this line would also have to pass through that point to be a solution. So the geometric significance of a unique solution is that there, uh, there is a unique point um, that all the lines pass through. I don't know why there's a comma there. Okay, so that's a unique solution. And now let's look at an infinite number of solutions. Well, like I said at the start, two lines can have infinite solutions if they're the same line. So if they pass over each other like this, right, then they have infinite solutions. Of course, it'd be nice if I could draw properly, but 
hopefully you get the idea here that they're they're on top of each other they're the same line so if you ask the question uh, how many points lie on both lines simultaneously well any point on the either line would be a solution to that system right a solution is um, a point that lays on both well, all the equations in the system so our system here is is just two lines so what points lay on both lines all the points on either line because they're the same line so infinite solutions here and if we still wanted infinite solutions then I'd you know I'd have to add another you know a third line which lays on top of these first two now what if it didn't what if it didn't lay on top what if it went some other way what if it went like this well, then there'd be one unique solution. We wouldn't have infinite solutions. That point right there, that green dot, or you know what, I'll make it blue. I'm running out of colors. That blue point right there, that would be our unique solution. Because that's the point that all three lines pass through. So if I still want to have infinite solutions, then all the lines have to be on top of each other. So the geometric significance of an infinite number of solutions when we have k equations and two variables, some number of equations and two variables. If I were to add a fourth one, because remember, we're talking about k equations. We don't know how many equations we have. But you can kind of think of it like, what would the next one need to be to maintain the fact that we have infinite solutions? So the next line would have to be on top of the first three to maintain the fact that we have an infinite number of solutions. So the geometric significance of infinite solutions in this specific case is that um, all the lines lay on top of each other. Whoops. Oh my God. Each other. I guess on top is not one word. Um, each other um, at all points. Another word for this is coincidental. Coincidental. Wow. Okay, I almost spelled it right, but I put the I N I. Okay, anyways, whatever. <laughs> I can do math. Uh, so all the lines lay on top of each other. This is also called coincidental, um, or um, or they they are coincident. And yeah, there you go. Okay, so. That wraps, up this, that wraps up this question. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day.